Welcome back, everybody. My guest tonight is a Formula One driver who just became a seven-time world champion, tying the record held by Michael Schumacher. Now he finds himself alongside Michael Schumacher as top in the record books. The world championship record is equaled. Lewis Hamilton wins the Turkish Grand Prix. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for your support. Please welcome to A Late Show, Lewis Hamilton. Lewis, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Well, uh, I, I don't know a lot about Formula One, but I am all swept up in your emotions there at the end of this race. Tell me what's, what's going through your head at that moment that we saw on tape just now. Well, Stephen, I've been racing for 27 years. I started when I was eight years old. The dream was to get to Formula One, and uh, I, I grew up watching Michael Schumacher win all those races and those titles, and I'm finally there. Uh, the last three laps, I, I knew that I was coming into the weekend, and if I had won the race, I would be, I would be world champion. And, you know, there, but there's so many things that can go wrong. So, you know, you just have to try and stay focused, not, you know, drop the ball, and I think as I was getting closer and closer, those last three laps, realizing that it may just be a reality that I'm, I'm, I'm it's really going to happen. Um, I think just all the emotions from, you know, all those years of my dad working at, at one time three or four jobs just to keep me racing and truly believing in me. Um, I think all those came through, and as, that's the first time I've cried in the in the car. So it was um, it was really emotional. Um, let's talk about keeping that car on the ground uh, in this race. The, the, the racetrack and Istanbul was so slick. The drivers were slipping during practice when the weather was fine. But then there, yeah. there was rain over the weekend. What were those conditions like for you? I mean, for the people who understand this sport, people are marveling at a level that I want to be able to appreciate. Explain to me what those conditions were like. Yeah, so they uh, we hadn't been to this track for nearly ten years, or, yeah, nine years, and uh, so they resurfaced the circuit. So it's just new tarmac that you would have on a on a highway. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's basically I don't know why it was so so dirty, and usually mm -hmm. like over the weekend it gets more and more rubber from the tires and it gets better and better. But this thing was not that wasn't happening. Maybe they resurfaced and, it with Teflon, you know, just to keep uh, as it clean like, as possible. I don't know. It was maybe a cheap a cheap job. I don't know. <laughs> And and then it rains, and when it rains, it's it's usually um, it's the the hardest conditions to race in in general. But at this track, it was like ice. We've never experienced. I don't think any of us drivers have experienced that in you know, especially in my Formula One career. So the attention to detail, the focus that you needed to have was so intense. I mean, I've been I've slept most of today just trying to recover because not only do you lose um, you know a lot of energy for the mental side. You can lose up to 10 pounds in the race. Um, this one was cold, so I only lost like five pounds. And just but, in just in sweat or other fluids? Yeah. <laughs> sweat. Because <laughs> I think I would lose some weight damn quick and, if I took yeah. a corner at 150 miles an hour. Yeah, definitely. No? Probably another way. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> you said you've been doing this for 27 years. You've dreamed of doing Formula One when we were just a kid. We, we have a clip here I want to show the audience. This is, do you know how old you are in this clip? You're being interviewed because you were kart racing at the time. I was about 10, yeah, like 10 or, 10? 10 or 11. Jim, can we show this? I went to Belgium and I saw the, the actual speed that they were doing. It was amazing because you don't actually think about it when you're watching the TV. And my kart feels really powerful when I'm in it. But imagine being in the Formula 1 car. Must be very powerful, that. What do, you, what do you think of when you see that footage? I, I, I would imagine it's the same for anyone watching back when they were a kid. They're, it's embarrassing. No, not, <laughs> at, all, not at all. You seem pretty okay. self-possessed as a 10-year-old. What would you like to tell that 10-year-old kid now, that, you know, seven-time world champion? I think um, would just be just just to never doubt yourself and continue to believe in yourself always. And, you know, I, ultimately, you know, I'm only human. And like all of us, we have our ups and downs. And, 
and mm -hmm. uh, you know you're constantly battling the the mind in trying to in trying to achieve the impossible and there are days where it feels like it might not work it feels you know there were stages through my career that I didn't think that there were days I didn't think I was good enough I wasn't going to make it and then I'd I'd go out for a long run I'd get back in the car get back on the horse and just keep pushing and never give up and you know that was something my dad installed in me I think as as a kid and it it has been challenging at times you're the first black driver in the 70 year history of formula 1 and uh, uh people were not always welcoming to you. Yeah. And you've raised uh, awareness of Black Lives Matter, you, you've advocated for inclusivity, and you've set up something called the Hamilton Commission. What is that? Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I don't know if you've seen the movie Cool Runnings, I always bring it up, but that was one of my favorite movies. And I'm sorry, um, which one? Cool which Runnings. One? Cool Runnings, yes, I have. Yeah. You're making Bob's Day team. So then when they arrive at the top of the hill, the whole, all the bobsledders stayed completely silent and they're like wondering what they're supposed to be doing there. Um, and it was the same for me and my dad when we, we arrived the first time at the go-kart track. We had the, the go-kart was fifth hand. Uh, my dad bought it from the back of a, of a newspaper. And we arrived scruffy and, and people were like, what are these guys doing here? We're, you know, we're the only black people there. And the, of course, we were not always welcome, but my dad always just said, do your talking on the track. And, and that's really what we did. We just stayed, kept our heads down and, and did what we loved. And I mean, and then I've, you know, got all the way to Formula One. And again, there was, you know, there was a, an idea of what a Formula One driver would look like and how they should behave and what they should be like. And, um, and I, was, I, I never really felt comfortable conforming to how people would expect. Um, but when I got to Formula One, I thought just us being there would help shift and break down barriers and, and help make the sport more diverse. But I realized after 14 years, looking at the, the, the layout of our sport, it is still not diverse. It is still a male, white dominated sport. And I would ask my team, like, why am I one of the only few people out of 2,000 people in our team? Why am I the you know, a handful of, of minorities there? And so I put together this, the Hamilton Commission, to try to understand what the barriers are and what the real root of the causes so we can um, ultimately through those findings can find a way to help encourage young black kids getting into STEM roles, into engineering in, in this industry. And I hope that that, you know, we've got people in the commission that are um, in politics on the ground that can really change, um, change the legislation rules and push um, on the ground in communities to help encourage these kids. Um I want to. We got to go in just a moment, but I want to ask you one last question. That I'm curious. Whenever I meet someone who is at the top of their game and whatever the sport is, I like to ask this question: Is there a movie about your sport that gets it right? Like <laughs> Ford versus Ferrari, Talladega Nights, movie. Talladega I mean, Nights. I'm a big fan of Talladega Nights personally. <laughs> when he's uh, when he's on fire, I, I love that. Um, I don't know. I think the racing movies are always really difficult. I think they're very, very tricky to for people to um, to, to, to understand. I guess. I guess it's a hard sport to people for people to relate to. But the Ford versus Ferrari, I think they did such a great job. It's two great, incredible actors. Um, so I personally love that. Um, it almost encouraged me to potentially go and drive some of those cars. But I, I'm not going to do them on. Um, well, you got seven world titles now. Uh, your contract with Mercedes is up this year. What's next? Um, I've got to get a new contract. Uh, I've, no, I bet. I bet. Would you myself. like to be sponsored by a CBS talk show? Uh, I'm interested. I've got space. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> my, my face on your hood. I'd be happy with that. <laughs> hey, if Talladega Nights he sells his visor, so I mean, I you know, I'm, I'm open. <laughs> well, so nice to meet you. Thanks for being here, Lewis. Stephen, thank you so much for having me. You can see his next race on November 29th on ESPN. Lewis Hamilton, everybody. We'll be right back with a performance by Andrea Bocelli.